leadership and management. So I would want us to take just 30 minutes to go through the case question for the many years, for the many years I've uh, handled this leadership and management. I know most of the students fail simply because of what year they are not very good in analyzing the case question. And yet the case question will always tend to give you most of the answers inside there. Your role is to understand the question very well. Once you understand the question very well, every other thing in this case here will fall in place. Every other thing will fall in place. Great. Great. So colleagues, what I'm doing, I'm doing this question that was tested last semester, the case question. Please let me know once you are able to see my screen. Once you are able to see my screen, let me know. Let me know once you are able to show to see my screen. Great, so they gave us a very good question, ladies and gentlemen here, a very good question, ladies and gentlemen here. So I'm doing leadership and management, paper CA31, CP advanced level, August sitting at 2023. I'm doing the case question, uh, Marina Company Limited. They really had a very exciting name, a very exciting name. MCL is a multinational company whose headquarters are in New Delhi. Sorry, I forgot one thing. Whenever you get this kind of a question, it's always important that you start reading the questions themselves. So you start reading the questions themselves. So we have uh, three or other four many questions actually. They wanted us to discuss three possible reasons why Marina Company Limited engaged the services of a business analyst. I mean, even without reading the case itself, I know the functions of a business analyst, six marks. Evaluate four internal factors that could have played part in impacting on MCL's bottom line. What are they asking about here? Internal, not external factors. C, examine four ways in which MCL could apply Michael Porter's generic competitive strategies to regain its competitive advantage. D, Identify the leadership style applied by Khan O in the case. Roman two, analyze four characteristics of the leadership style applied by Khan Ho in D1 above. E, lastly, explain the type of thinking that Peter Quick used to address the problem. Two, analyze four steps followed in the thinking process described in E1 above, in E1 above. So then I'll be able to read the case question pretty fast. Pretty fast. I'll be able to read the case question pretty, pretty, very fast. We will start. So we are told there Marina Company Limited is a multinational company whose headquarters are in New Delhi, India. The company established its offices in Kenya in the year 2012 and currently operates in 15 other countries across the globe. So indeed, this is a multinational. The company specializes in solar technology and offers alternative power solutions in remote areas where main electric power cannot be easily accessed. The vision of MCL is to truly power the world and bring comfort to the forgotten, like the last mile electricity program that we have in Kenya. We're really getting to the people who have been forgotten. The company manufactures most of their plants centrally in India and then ships them directly to its global markets. At the initial stages of establishment, MCL collaborated with the Technical Institute to train technologists who assembled and maintained their appliances. The company's after-sales service approach has boosted its customer base globally. Any major repair was referred back to the New Delhi. I love this concept of after-sales service. You don't just sell a good. Once you've done the transfer, if that particular good doesn't work for the customer, you just look the other way. No, here we look your way and you are able to ensure that that particular product is well serviced and you are happy with the product. A very good way really of 
ensuring that customers will be satisfied and they shall be loyal to you. In the year 2013, MCL hired a business analyst. Question number one was about why did they hire a business analyst? So MCL hired a business analyst to carry out a worldwide business analysis with the aim of identifying countries where new offices could be set up. This decision would be based on a wide variety of factors globally. MCL customers were classified according to their geographical regions. Africa region was the largest with the MCL present in five countries. The company had enjoyed monopoly status in the countries where it operated for a long period of time. So it was enjoying monopoly status. Competition wasn't there at all. From the year 2018, competition has been building up where some companies have been able to offer more advanced and better products. Serious, it's a serious threat. This has led to MCL's bottom line. Bottom line means what year? Profitability. This has led to MCL's bottom line being impacted adversely. The competitors' products are imported as a complete portable set and do not require local assembly. The marketing model used by competitors borrows heavily on multi-level marketing and therefore embraced by MCL what year customers. Remember, multi-level marketing is a very, very dangerous eh, marketing model. This basically means that eh, whoever you introduce and they are able to buy these electrical appliances, automatically, you who is at the top there, you are able to get some benefit. So basically, you are having, you, you, you are grooming so many marketers. You can imagine, for example, as a RCM online college, if we started this concept of multi-level marketing, right? So we will have, in this case here, Mr. A bring a student, in this case here, called B. B brings C. The one, in this case here, who is at the top there, ladies and gentlemen, will keep on earning every other day from just his referrals. And when his referrals also bring some more people to buy our courses, they also do what they also benefit. So if you are in an industry and then you realize that uh, you are one of your competitors has entered into this kind of an arrangement and it happens to work, please, this is a very big threat to you. This is a system that can wipe you out of business 100%. Because, I mean, a customer have just come in to consume a course. And here now, again, I'm being rewarded for the people that I do what here I bring on board. I mean, I will go and bring everybody, even my grandmother, everybody will be brought to buy from this particular what here, this particular company. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, the marketing model used by competitors borrows heavily on multi-level marketing and therefore embraced by MCL customers. Perception associated with the company such as MCL would sell in large quantities and undermines quality selling. The competitors introduced the new modes of selling including higher purchase and loaning for the appliances. Ladies and gentlemen, I really sympathize with the MCL because now they are getting themselves in a tricky situation. The competitors in this case here are able to give out their goods. The competitors are able to sell their goods through what is through a loan arrangement. So even if you don't have cash from the word go, we will easily give you this thing. You go with it and you pay us on a higher purchase terms. These modes were quickly adopted by the customers. Peter Quick joined MCL in the year 2020 as the head of sales, Africa region. At a time, competition was very stiff and the financial position of the company was very low. Major customers that had remained loyal to MCL were shifting now their loyalty to the other side. By the year 2021, the competition grew exponentially as new entrants joined in with cheaper and more technologically advanced appliances. Can Ho, the global operations general manager whose office in New Delhi planned for a brainstorming workshop, brainstorming workshop in the year 2012, 2022, I mean, for all the regional sales heads to advise on the way forward. The regional sales managers were required to provide scientific responses to the problem, guided by facts and the unique challenges in each of their regions. Can Ho expected that the workshop would yield remedies to the effects of fierce competition and the way forward will be arrived at. In preparation for the workshop, Peter Quick, the guy who is uh, heading the sales team, and his team carried out an in-depth internal and external analysis of MCL. 
So basically, they use two models here. They must have used sort analysis, sort is strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Sort analysis is a very good model of assessing the company's capacity weaknesses, ETC, internally, and of course, from external forces. And they must have also used the Pestel model, Pestel model, Pestel model, or Michael Porter's five forces, Michael Porter's five forces. So in this case here, we are told here that uh, in preparation for the workshop, Peter Quick and his team carried out an in-depth internal and external analysis of MCL, studied their competitor strengths, customers' behavior, market volatility, competitors and products differentiation. In the analysis, it was undisputable that some of the MCL's appliances were unique and effective in the market. To enable him to understand behind the customer shift, the reasons behind the customer shift in loyalty, Peter Quick purchased some of the competitor's products and shipped them to the company's main laboratory in India for details of their constituent parts. The laboratory report revealed that 70% of their competitors' products comprised of MCL's products components. The only major differentiating factor was the logo, color, and the packaging. So now here we have to ask ourselves, is there any issue of uh, infringement, infringement of the trademark? Mm -hmm. Most of the competitors were buying MCL's products, adding on a few improvements, rebranding, packaging, and selling the products in the market as their own. In his presentation, Peter Quick noted that the assignment was complex and weighty. To enable him to have a logical presentation during the workshop, he classified his findings in the following categories, marketing strategies, production and operations, human resource, ethics and morals, because surely our competitors in this case here, I mean, they were not ethical at all. And of course, legal issues. The workshop recommended certain measures to be undertaken. These measures included, number one, to broaden the customer's base. Number two, top management to implement e-marketing strategy, electronic marketing strategy. Number three, the company to reclassify their customers according to products. Number four, MCL to reduce costs for their products because here they have to pursue cost. They have to pursue, in this case here, cost reduction strategies. If they are to impress their clients, they must reduce their costs for them to be able to take their price a little bit down because of the competition now. Litigation and court actions against companies that had used MCL's patent illegally. By the beginning of this year, the company's bottom line had started showing a positive increase. Quite great. Customers were trickling back in, and it is expected that by the end of the year, the company will have regained its lost market share. So required. Discuss three possible reasons why MCL engaged the services of a business analyst. Who can tell me in this case here using short, short lines, what do you think, ladies and gentlemen, are the major functions of a business analyst? Is there somebody who knows the major functions, the major functions of a business analyst? Who is a business analyst? Who is a business analyst? They are not talking to me. They are not talking to me. They are not talking to me. What does a business analyst in this case here do? Why would you want to hire a business analyst? Why would you want to hire a business analyst? So, of course, business analysts normally will do a lot of data analysis. These are the guys, for example, ladies and gentlemen, that we shall be able to send outside there. Now that you're seeing that this company is really growing internationally, these are the guys who will be able to do what we call feasibility study. Feasibility study. So under feasibility study, we shall have, for example, the top management 
giving us ideas, giving us proposed projects, giving us proposed changes. And then myself as a business analyst, I will be able to gather data, gather that data that will be able to support and of course disapprove some of the strategies that these guys are doing what here, yeah, these guys are proposing. So feasible, you know, feasible, I'm talking about this feasibility. I'm talking about this feasibility. Feasibility, is this, for example, market feasible? I'm talking about this feasibility. Feasibility, I'm talking about this feasibility like that. So before you go to a new country, like for example, you must have seen Chinese Chinese people doing this quite a lot. They go to a particular project if it's, for example, the uh, like uh, the, the, this uh, railway. So they'll be able to do what we call a feasibility study, and they'll be able to compute, for example, net present values, look at the cash flows it is, and then they advise on the basis of facts, basis of facts. So it's very good. Ladies and gentlemen, any other, any other, any other thing that you guys are able to think about that uh, these business analysts do? In line with business uh, feasibility studies, these guys also engage in what we call business case development. Business case development. Business case development. You can't, ladies and gentlemen, start developing your business without facts. So you need a business analyst who will be able to evaluate, who will be able to do what we call a cost-benefit analysis, a cost-benefit analysis. And people tell you, if you go here, if you expand your business this way, or rather, if, for example, you're taking these guys here to court, this will be the benefit, and this will be the what here, potential costs and risks cost and risks. So I'm waiting to get answers from you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm waiting to get answers from you. A business analyst. Business analyst, as I get answers from you, they also engage in what we call stakeholder communications. Because to them, any kind of uh, business you want to venture in, any great business analyst will always look at uh, the bigger picture. I mean, you want to start, in this case here, this project around here. I mean, they'll tell you who are affected, who are the stakeholders here. Because business analysts, at the end of the day, these guys are basically coming to also give us information for project management. And you can't be a very good project manager if you do not know who the stakeholders of a, a company are. You must evaluate, know who they are and evaluate, in this case here, they are, their needs, their needs. So if I share my answers, ladies and gentlemen, and then we go them uh, to, together through them, it will be great. So we have here. I can see you guys have very good points there. I can see you guys have very good points there. So we are told here, discuss three possible reasons why MCL engaged the service of a business analyst six months. So the first one is market expansion. MCL hired a business analyst to assess potential markets for expansion. The company's initial presence in Kenya and its desire to establish offices in other countries required a thorough analysis of market conditions, including demand, competition, and regulatory factors to make informed decisions about where to expand next. Ladies and gentlemen, remember a business analyst, as somebody has told us there, this guy is a business advisor and they'll be able to advise a business on various fronts. And one of these fronts, of course, in this case is market expansion. Expand or don't expand. Then we have competitive analysis. These guys will be able to look at, I mean, who are our competitors in this industry? They'll be able to analyze their key strengths. They'll be able to analyze their key weaknesses, which in this case here now, we as MCL as a company can go and capitalize on their weaknesses for us to be able to basically increase our market share. So competitive analysis, the increasing competition in the solar technology industry, as mentioned in the case, prompted MCL to seek services of a business analyst. 
The analyst would have been tasked with evaluating the strategies and offerings of competitors to identify weaknesses and areas where MCL could improve its competitive position. Ladies and gentlemen, we also hire business analysts for us to be able to make decisions. Decision making, and we are talking of what we call the strategic decision making. Strategic means what here? Yeah, decisions that you are going to enter into, which will be able to assist you in the long term. Remember, a greater company is that company which looks at that long term, would want, in this case, to bequeath the businesses that we have to our children, ETC. All right? So strategic decision making, MCL's vision to power the world and bring comfort to the forgotten is a broad and ambiguous goal. Engaging a business analyst would have helped the company make strategic decisions based on data and insights. This could include product development, pricing strategies, and the market segmentation to align with its vision effectively. So ladies and gentlemen, what are we talking about here? That basically, these guys, business analysts, you are hiring, hiring them to help us make better decisions. And I would want to give one example. I would want to give one example. Look at a company, for example, like EABL. EABL, they make a bad product, alcohol, very bad product. But this alcohol, for it to be sold to us, it needs packaging. Now, there are two ways that uh, EABL can get their packaging materials. Number one, they can decide to produce those packaging themselves. Number two, they may decide to outsource. Because remember, them, ladies and gentlemen, packaging materials, making of packaging materials is not their primary duty. Their core business is alcohol. So any other activity or product that they may be needing will be secondary. And of course, whenever they are secondary, then we must make a decision. Do we make these things inside here? Do we produce them inside here? Or should we get a person to deliver them? For many years, what breweries has been doing is to outsource all their bottles from some company which is nearby them called Central Glass industries, central glass industries. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the work of a business analyst who could also be a management accountant who can come and tell them that, hey, if you are making this product, there are overheads, there are employees you must hire, there are this and this and this, and then it gives us the total cost of making. If you're going to outsource, then you should be able to tell us that outsourcing from central glass, it is this much. So that at the end of the day, as we make decisions, we make decisions that are geared towards creating wealth for the company. Decisions that create wealth are those decisions that will lead to products, will lead to services, will lead to systems whose benefits are always more than the costs. In short, profitable, profitable ventures. Ladies and gentlemen, I like what I'm seeing from Stanley Mosioka here, the concept of what here, advising, advising the board, and of course the top management regarding new ideas regarding new products to be produced. So basically is giving us this from the front of what here, innovation. Yes, business analyst must be on top of what here, innovation. I like this, innovation. Nathan is giving us a very good point there that uh, business analysts are also very good in terms of uh, risk analysis. Risk analysis. These guys will be able to do a very nice report. For example, on Pestel, they'll tell you, Politics, this is how politics will affect you. You rai man, in the other regime, you are very closely associated with Uhuru Kenyatta. Now that we have a new government that has just uh, put in their foot in a very strong way in Kenya here, chances are you'll be taken to heaven. So the better thing to do for you in this case is to find a better country. Go back like that. So polit political, political, economy. These guys will come and tell you that these are the economic risks. Like right now, we have inflation going through the roof. When inflation goes through the roof high like that, it means automatically that customers are not economically empowered. Their purchasing power is, is almost zero. And if that is the case, there is a high likelihood that demand will go down. And once they tell that the demand will go down, then you need to do some what we call what if analysis. What if demand goes down by 10%? It is what will happen. Feasibility. I say assist the business in re-engineering re their business processes. Now, these are very, very good points. The only thing that you guys are not doing is tying down your points to the case question. 
Remember, in most cases, they want you to connect your great ideas to the kids. And that is why I normally tell my LM students that uh, regardless of the answers you give, try always to mention the name of the company. Like if it's business reengineering, I mean, how can we have? We, we have been enjoying monopoly status. And then in this case here, we have some new entrants coming straight away to dethrone us. It means that our business processes, our business processes in this case here may not be very, very good. So we need in this case here to re-engineer. So in this case, if I was the one writing this, like Eunice Moore has written there, I will just mention something like, uh, we can see like now the bottom line of this company has been affected. The profitability is going down. All right. This would mean that uh, MCL has to relook at uh, its current processes and ask itself a question. Where are we getting it wrong? The moment we ask ourselves like that, then we'll be able to demonstrate that we really understand the case. Because most of the students, whenever we mark these papers, most of the students are just doing one line answers, one line answers, one line answers, one line answers like that. The case question has got 40 marks and somebody expects to get from that one line answer, like you can't even get 10. That's why people are really repeating in this paper. That's why people are failing in this paper. So always we shall try, we shall try to do what here, we shall try, we shall try always to link our answers to the question, our answers to the question. Great. So then we can go to the second part. The second part of this question asked us, ladies and gentlemen, quite a nice question. Evaluate four internal factors that could have played a part in impacting MCL's bottom line, bottom line, bottom line. Ladies and gentlemen, remember in this case here, they are talking about what here internal coming from inside here, inside here. Those bad behaviors that you think in this case here would be engaged in, which are affecting our profitability. Are you guys able to state them? I know, I know many, many that I can guess. Many, many. Like laxity, laxity of employees. We have employees in this case here who do not believe in, for example, what we call the FIOLs, 14 principles of management. FIOLs, 14 principles, files, 14 principles, 14 principles, 14 principles of management. Files, 14 principles of management. So under files, 14 principles of management, remember, we normally use this concept of that. You see, you see, USSR, you see USSR, dad, you see USSR, oh, I see, oh. I see. If you get employees, ladies and gentlemen, who do not know this, are they 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. If you have employees, ladies and gentlemen, and of course management that does not recognize this concept of DAD, you see USSR, then automatically, oh, I see, automatically that company will go under. The first D is disciplined workers. Look at even where you're working. The moment you have a company or you are in a company where employees basically believe in the drinking culture, that they are so much into drinking and talking about sports every day, so they're not able to give their employer the eight hours in a day. When they get into the office, it's about gossip, it's about the moment you have employees who are not disciplined, ladies and gentlemen, then you have lost the game. The same is also applicable to these managers who do not understand this concept of uh, the Gilbert's couple. The Gilbert's couple, the Gilbert's couple, with useless managers who do not understand this concept of Gilbert's uh, couple. Remember Gilbert's, this was a very serious couple. And I keep on telling you, Fatuma, Kevin Wanjala, Mumbe, as couples are fighting outside here, we have some other couples that are serious, which are doing lots, lots of research. Like these guys were able to do a research and they told us that eh, every person in a company must do three things. Everybody must be a doer. Everybody must be a trainer. Everybody must be a trainee. Everybody must be a trainee. So you will get managers whose role is to sit on some comfortable red chair. They sit on some comfortable red chair. In this case, they keep on swinging around, swinging around and throwing commands left, right, and center. They are doing nothing. All right. 
Remember, as a gentleman, nowadays as a manager, you must put your hands on the ground. Not, I'm not saying that you don't delegate. Delegation is there, but as you delegate, remember, still the overall responsibility is yours. And that is why a good manager will always be engaged in what we call umbua. Umbua is management by walking around. You must be a good communicator. You must be a good planner. You must be a good organizer. All right? Remember, we also call them the five functions, the five functions, the five functions of management. If you get management who do not understand this concept of five functions of management, then automatically we shall always get ourselves into problems. The five functions of management, these are POCC, POCC, planning, organizing, coordination. In this case here, communications and what we call control, controlling. So then every manager, or every employee must be a doer. It is the Chinese model as well. Chinese model, it is the Chinese model. The Chinese model, it is the Chinese model. You know, in Chinese model, there is nothing like a boss. Actually, in China or Chinese companies, when you are a boss, you do more than the subordinate. But ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, I think ours is a caste model where you get like, uh, we have so many bosses up there who are doing nothing. They'll come and they're given three newspapers, hang their coats outside there just waiting to sign checks like that. It's so sad. And we are saying that you would want to be a developed what here? Country. So, so many things must have gone wrong for this company, ladies and gentlemen, here to have their bottom line going down there must have been an issue with, for example, employees who are not going for trainings, all right? Remember, as per the Glibus couple, every employee must be a trainee. You must be trained. You must be trained. In this case here, remember, we have production systems here. These guys were not investing in their employees because their employees would have easily, if they were really, really up to date in terms of technological development, they would have... Uh, they would have, uh, they would have, uh, they would have done what year? They would have known, like, what are the market trends? Dua, Dua, Festus is not uh, like an acronym. A Dua is a performer. It's an English word. It's an English word. It's an English word. So up to there, first of all, are we together, really? I don't think we are together. Are we together? It's like I'm losing you guys. Are we together? Are you trying to follow before I share my answer? Are you trying to follow in some way? Oh, great. So, ladies and gentlemen, like, for example, this thing of local assembly, production systems, production systems like uh, we see ourselves, we are a major company in Nairobi here, and we are doing, we are importing things from India, and then we come to assemble them here. So, it means that we must be having a huge assembly line. Some of these productions that happen locally here, because of a backwardness in terms of systems, because of backwardness in terms of even, for example, the quality of employees. Let me ask you guys a question, honestly speaking, and please don't be emotional. Let's not work with emotions here. When you rate, especially for those of you who have ever been to Europe, to Dubai, and for example, of course, you're an African here. When you rate our workers vis-a-vis -vis those European workers, who do you think is more hardworking? Somebody who has traveled or somebody who has been, say, for example, in Dubai, when you gauge these guys who are white vis-a-vis -vis we people of color, Susan says, without emotions, Africans are more hardworking. Eunice also is uh, saying Africans are more hardworking. I would beg to differ. I would beg to differ. I would beg to differ. Ladies and gentlemen, Africans, we are only cheap. We provide cheap labor. There is a statistic that I gave you the other day. I told you, like in Kenya here, about 80% of we Kenyans go to our workplaces every morning with an intention of stealing. And the, the asset being stolen in most cases is time. It's time. Mzungu, as well as telling us there like an Indian, ladies and gentlemen, these guys are normally, these guys 
are normally good planners, they may not be able to put in a lot of energy like we do. But brains into whatever they do, they are very good. You can't get any white person, ladies and gentlemen, who does not know how to use a calendar. But here, you'll get CPAs who do not plan their day. All right. Anyway, at the end of the day, and this explains why, ladies and gentlemen, for example, you'll get sugar that is being produced in Mumia's sugar company here, being expensive than sugar coming from Egypt the transportation cost notwithstanding, all right? It's because of what here, the inefficiencies, inefficiencies around here. And that is why you can see everybody is doing what here, and gentlemen, all the competitors are having or everything of theirs assembled outside there. They're bringing finished product. They're bringing finished products locally here. They're bringing finished products locally. I'm not saying that we are bad, but right now that, now that we're becoming at the center stage of a, a global economy, we're becoming, we're becoming a, an economic hub, Kenya. It's high time we need to rethink. If we are to be given like a, a very good uh, 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 position in terms of uh, workforce, we have to rethink. We must be able to put our best foot forward at uh, our workplaces at our workplaces. I've worked Chinese. Chinese come in with barabara kianza kuchongele machuma. Uto na akisheka sigara ke apa. Uto na kiamuka kupiga story. No. Those guys are mean are so good at whatever they do. Ladies and gentlemen, please allow me to read this uh, very, very well. And of course, uh, we know that uh, in Africa, we also have a problem with what here? Ethics. We have a problem with ethics. So if I share this very fast, I hope we shall be able to get time to finish this. So we are told here, evaluate four internal factors that could have played a part in impacting MCL's bottom line. Number one is production and operations. There is a need for local assembly of appliances as opposed to competitors who offered complete portable sets, added operational complexity and the cost to MCL. So in this case here, this thing over the need for local assembly. The need for local assembly added operational complexity and the cost to our company. You do every production outside there, then you come to assemble here. Why don't you just finish everything? This could have reduced cost effectiveness and impacted the bottom line. Marketing strategies. MCL's traditional marketing model may not have adapted to changing customer preferences. Competitors, use of multi-level marketing and the innovative sales models like higher purchase and loaning likely attracted more customers away from MCL human resources, the skill level and efficiency of the workforce, particularly in the assembly and the maintenance of appliances could impact production costs and overall product quality. Employee morale and training also play a role in productivity and customer service. Ethics and morals, the case mentioned that some competitors were using MCL's products components without authorization. This could have ethical implications and the potential legal consequences, which might affect MCL's reputation and what year finances. Ladies and gentlemen, of course, as we plan even to go to court, we know at the end of the day that uh, we will be using money to pay the lawyers. And this immorality and ethical behavior could also be contributed by our own staff. It could be our own staff who are going out there to give our competitors what here to give our competitors informa information. To give you, so these guys are internal here. Now, because of time, please allow me to go to part C. Examine four ways in which MCL could apply my Porter's generic competitive strategies to regain its competitive advantage. Remember, my Porter. Is there anybody who has had ever heard of my Porter? My Porter. Michael Porter, these are great gentlemen. Great gentlemen. So Michael Porter, you may forget about Michael Porter's every other thing. But always remember that eh, this is a person who told us that eh, for you to succeed, you must be a cost leader. You must be a cost leader. You must be a cost leader. That's number one. You must be a cost leader. And for you to succeed, you must differentiate your products. Differentiate your products. Before you talk about any other thing, those two things are very, very important. They are very important. So like if it's RCM Online College, 
as the leader, currently I'm the leader of RCM Online College, and I suppose I'll still be there for some time, like say 10 years before I take my retirement. I must always ask myself, how will I make RCM different, different from other colleges? So like now I know that uh, there are no colleges which have this LMS, learning management system. So then I go and look at what other colleges abroad they are doing. I discover LMS is a strong thing. So then how do we do it? We have a learning management system where once you enter inside, you're able to get notes, you're able to get videos. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for the students who are using our LMS, are you getting some value out of it? Are you getting some value out of it? Are you getting some value out of it? This LMS, you can see, yes. Yes, I'm so sure the moment now, so much value. The moment now you have uh, been with us, in this case here, you have tested the LMS, there is no way anybody will be able to get you out of a RCM. Even if they try sponsoring some whatever surveys, they can't get you out of RCM. Because with the LMS, you are able even to read ahead of the teacher. When you miss a class, you are able to, of course, we are not yet perfect. We haven't reached that position like uh, there is a course that I'm doing, a course that I'm doing, where those guys, for example, after just the class is over, like this class, the, 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 the video goes to the LMS, in this case, automatically. There's nothing like following people to. Everything is automated. That's where I would want to be. All right. Then the other thing that we have also discovered is that uh, there are students who are in the remote areas who would want downloadable videos, downloadable videos that they'll be able to download and uh, subsequently watch without what your internet, without internet. So that's why we have been able to come up with an app. I'm so sure most of you are not yet in that app. All right. So we'd want coming next semester, two products that we'd want to really give our students here for free. Once you pay for our Zoom classes, you'll be able to get for free the app where you'll be able to download the videos. Already it is uh, in uh, uh, Google Play, RCM, if you look for it, you will to get it. But still, it's uh, going through some uh, a few issues here and there. So it's still, it's, it's work in progress. So once you have that, I mean, I'm so sure we will be a market leader. And if the other play guys are not careful, will easily, in this case, yes, snatch. So it's about differentiation. It's CPA you're doing at RCM, and somebody's doing the same CPA, but how do we package ourselves to be different, to be different? And then, of course, cost leadership strategy. So like a cost leader, what we do, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, is to ensure that our costs are always minimal are always minimal, our production cost. Like we don't invest in so advanced. We are basically giving people this, we're using this strategy, it's called, and this will be tested one day, no frills strategy. No frills strategy, no frills strategy. So for example, when you fly like Emirates, you can go, ladies and gentlemen, and there, do business, business class. So on the business class, you have a lot of frills, a lot of benefits. Like your chair is big, your food comes like a three-course food. And then, of course, you can decide to be at the very back, the normal class. Normal class. Normal class, uh, if it's uh, actually no frills at all, you can even just like how people do from here to now, uh, Mombasa using the jumbo thing without even being given a, a bottle of water. No water at all. That's called no frills strategy. No frills strategy. So there are no much comfort, but yet you are able to get, in this case, here, sub, uh, 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 substantial value from the product that you are consuming. Because I mean, how many guys do, like currently we are serving about 2,000 students, and most of them tend to, uh, or rather get to pass. They get to pass. It's called the no frills strategy. No frills strategy. Very, 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 very important for us to capture this. So like under this concept of no frills strategy, it's wrong. For you to have a lot of senior managers, we are duplicating roles. We have a senior manager, for example, is a gentleman who is the head of sales in Delhi. Another guy is the head of sales in Kenya. Why can't we have the guy who is in charge of sales in uh, Delhi doing this e-marketing? E-marketing, and they should be able to, I mean, right now with uh, this exposure of teams, with this exposure of Zoom, why should we have a head of sales in Africa? Then we have a head of sales, for example, globally. All right, this is adding costs. This is adding costs to who? To the whole project. We are adding costs to the whole 
project. We are adding cost to the whole project. Now, remember, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, also this guy spoke of uh, something very, very important. He spoke of something very, very important. The ones that are key is cost leadership. And then we have, ladies and gentlemen, uh, what you're calling differentiation. And he also came and told us focus, 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 focus. This thing of uh, really trying to diversify. You would want to do every other thing. You have a shop along Krinyaga Road. And then once you realize that there is this competitor who is selling tires very well, you get into tires. You want to do everything. No. Of course, you can still diversify, but please don't overdo it. We need to identify our line and then we focus. I work for a company called AARO during the day. It's a Swedish company. Like now I'm working from home. I'm so happy. I mean, I... I got a very good deal, right? That's the name of the company. Now, these guys, they provide a group consolidation software. It's a group consolidation, a group consolidation software. This group consolidation software is the one that is being used by Equity Bank, is being used by EABL and many, many other companies to consolidate the financial performance between the group and the subsidiaries. So one day I asked these guys, but so many customers who are coming to us here in the offices in Kenya here, they are asking for what they can use to do their daily accounting, day-to-day -day accounting. You know, this is a financial reporting tool. You report at the end of the year. So they wanted something that they could use to do their daily accounting. So I went and asked them. They told me, no, we cannot go there because our focus, or rather our job, is to focus 100% on group consolidation. We focus 100% on group consolidation. So everything is about how do you create goodwill? How do you do this and this? How do you consolidate? So because of that, these guys have been able to take big clients. Like right now, we are the ones who are consolidating Sony Global. So the global has over 500 subsidiaries, about 200 and something joint ventures. It is on global and they're using our software to consolidate. So once you focus like that, the ladies and gentlemen, you will be able to really become very good at whatever you do. Of course, you can have, like you now we have another product called the lease, arrow lease, right? This, this, of course, in this case is what we call the branches, but the main stem, stem I mean, is 100% focus on group, consolidation, group reporting. So focus, focus. So ladies and gentlemen, when you talk over Michael Porter, the Michael Porter strategies, Michael Porter strategies in terms of uh, the bottom line, number one, you must always remember the concept of cost leadership. If you are a cost leader in your industry, automatically your profits will be up there. Remember that to get profits, how do we get profits here? To get profit, to get profit, we normally take revenue, we normally take revenue minus who? Minus cost. To get profit, we normally take revenue minus cost. So enhance your revenues. Enhance your revenues as you put breaks on what year? As you put breaks on cost. But again, remember, we are looking at longevity of the business. So there are things you can't cut. For example, you can't cut the cost of what year? The cost of training your staff. You can't cut the marketing cost. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think I've really gone overboard in terms of talking and talking and talking. I would want uh, to call this thing to an end because we need to relax a little bit before at 2 p.m. It's my hope that you have gotten some value out of this and you shall make a conscious decision to join RCM Online College. To join RCM Online College, study with us. You can't go wrong. We have very many goodies with us. Our number is 07 93 93 000. 07 19 And you're charging, we are charging how much? 4,500 per paper. 4,500 per paper. Molimu, do you teach LM? I'm getting some uh, 
a direct message here. No, we have very good teachers of LM. We have Mr. Dan. We have Mr. Uh, Luvaha Kenyani. Myself, what I do, I come at the end. When I do these low-hanging fruits, sessions with my students, that's what I do. I'm here to support those gentlemen, but they do a wonderful job. They do a wonderful job. For my level, at my level as a gentleman, normally what I do at the end of uh, the semester, like two weeks to the exam, I'll come and introduce very good things. Like now you'll get students who are struggling with what we call Max Weber. Max Weber. You see, Max Weber is the father of who? The father of bureaucracy. This is that gentleman who went ahead to study in institutions like, for example, Catholic Church. And he told us that those, those kind of institutions which began in those old, old days will not die even today. They'll be there till the coming of Christ. It's not that they worship any superior God than we do. All of us are children of the same God. The only difference between Catholic and these other church that is owned by a couple is respect for rules and regulations, bureaucracy. You see, in Catholic, there is no way you'll just wake up just anywhere in between the mass and, for example, you start singing a chorus. Everybody will look at you because their church has an order. Whatever is being studied at the Vatican on a Sunday is basically, I mean, thrown out there in like every Catholic, there is order. There is order. That notwithstanding, actually, that's not even the major thing. The major thing is in how we run our finances. Catholic, yes, they have their own own uh, shortcomings. All right? Like there are times you hear like a priest has married. Of course, those things happen. But trust you me, if, for example, you want to get some money out of a Catholic church, I mean, there is a lot of uh, paperwork to be done. A lot of paperwork to be done. You can't just steal money from a Catholic church. That is why they've been able to really get into projects that are assisting the society. How about these other churches? I'm, I'm not saying that they are bad, but these are the churches where they go wrong. These guys don't know anything to do with the financial prudence. All right? All right? They don't know that. So you get somebody, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here, for example, who will come and say, baby, what did we take in the morning for breakfast? This other girl comes from wherever she says we took this, uh, forgetting that uh, these guys who are giving those uh, offerings, I mean, they also want uh, to have the same life. That's not the problem. Now, baby, this is my birthday. What do we do? The baby says, a vehicle worth five million. That's why you will get most of those churches, ladies and gentlemen, they don't have anything that can help the society at all. It's just opulence that they are showing among us themselves themselves. And that is why most of them, when those uh, bishops and whatever they die, the church also da dies. For longevity, we should always be following what we call Max Weber. Remember Max Weber also spoke up against the concept of personal relationships in the company. In the company. He said if you would want this company to go very, very far away, let us all of us respect the rules. Assuming today I become a president. And then I appoint Andrew Nyundo. I appoint, in this case here, Francis Mburu as one of my ministers. I'm so sure, Francis, when I call you, hey, Francis Mburu, this is the president calling you. I would want 10 million. You'll say, hey, this was my teacher. And he has done me a big favor, appointing me a minister. So let's say, Mualimu, take that. Take a take, you can see. According to Max Weber, that is very wrong. According to Max Weber, Francis Mburu should call me and ask me, was this money approved? What does the law say in terms of, for example, remove? that way we shall be able to kill corruption. Because this concept of personal, I mean, how did we relate in the past before we took these positions? Those are things, according to Max Weber, we should be able to do what here to finish. That's Max Weber. And then now we have this guy called uh, Elton Mayo. So Elton Mayo, ladies and gentlemen, this is the father of uh, empathy. Is the father of empathy. So Elton Mayo went and told us, did very good experiments in America, General Electric, uh, in this case, a company called uh, Houghton. It's General Electric Company, Houghton's experiment. Houghton is a town, Houghton's experiment. He took some ladies, put them in this case here in some room. They were doing, uh, I know you guys, young guys, you pronounce this name badly. They were doing sewing, not sewing. <laughs> they were sewing. Now, so 
he was wearing light, increased light, those ladies' productivity went up. So one time, in this case here, we had the power blackout, so total darkness. So in total darkness, ladies and gentlemen, those ladies' productivity increased against the wishes, against the expectations of uh, uh, Elton Mayo. So Elton Mayo called each of those ladies to his uh, office, wanting to know, I mean, in darkness, what happened? Darkness means what? He had problems. In these problematic times, what happened? The ladies told this gentleman that, you know what? Simply your presence. During this darkness, you came and stayed with us. That coming to us, all right, sympathizing with us, empathizing with us, really worked magic. There's no way we could let you down because you stayed with us the whole night. And that is why now Max Weber came and said, what matters most is how you relate with your subordinates. How you relate with your subordinates. That is what matters most. Look at, for example, a company like Safaricom, ladies and gentlemen. Safaricom, if you give birth after three months, when you're supposed to come back after your maternity leave, you're supposed to go back there with your baby. Every day you travel back. Every day you go there with your baby. They put up a whole floor where in this case, they're able to look at those babies. And the very good people up there who are able to look at those babies when they grow a little bit uh, more, they even take them to some kind of kindergarten, CTC. So when you get a lady, even if they're not being paid very well, even if, for example, they're getting something like 150000 those ladies here will tell you, so long as I'm productive, so long as I'm getting children, I will work for Safaricom. Simply because of what, yeah, that empathy, how do you make, in this case, like Equity Bank, their maternity leave is only two months, and then you go back with nothing to the work, and then here you are trying to drain yourself milk. It's bad. It's bad. That's going against, in this case here, human dictates. You know, there is a difference between sympathy is where you look at a poor person and you say, oh, yeah, you feel fine, kind of, uh, you're masterful, but at the end of the day, you do nothing. You go home. Empathy is where you put yourself in someone's shoes. A lady who has given birth is not a very easy situation. These are not the kind of people when they come in a little bit late, like by 30 minutes, you start in this case, you're shouting at the top of your voice. No, sometimes those guys have not slept the whole night. You must exercise what we call empathy, the school of human relations. It's called the Hotton's experiment, Elton Mayo. All right. So once you have got that kind of exposure, like myself in terms of uh, LM, at the end of the day, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be and, and I read, I read, I read, I read this thing of uh, EABL. I like reading a lot. So EABL, ladies and gentlemen, they have come up with a very, very good thing. If, for example, you are a lady and then you happen to lose a pregnancy, you lose pregnancy, you lose pregnancy at some weeks. EABL has, I don't know whether there is anybody who read about this last week. EABL has come up with a, a six months leave, morning, paid for the ladies, six months leave. You just go and mourn. I mean, that is out of what here? Empathy. They are basically exercising Elton Mayo's uh, concept. Because you don't, just don't take it for granted. Somebody who has been carrying a kid in a half for about, say, six, five months, and then that kid, like, and then you want to tell us that she had not seen this kid, blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. No, there is that attachment. Give this guy six months. And then, of course, they gave us, uh, if you are the husband of that man, you are given two weeks paternity kind of paternity week also to go and do what here, mourn, which is still good. It's not enough. We were complaining at my office. Eh? It's not enough, but this is much better. It's something I mean. It's something I mean. Great. So, ladies and gentlemen, it has been quite a pleasure hosting you around here. And I always uh, I take it, uh, I mean, with pride that I'm given a chance to mentor you people. I'm so sure in the next two, three years, the kind of managers that I'm producing here, you guys will have a very big impact out there two, three years from today. Thank you very much, and amen to that. Bye.